we're going to be looking at a gentleman in the Bible who had very peculiar strength. And even before we start talking about him, uh, we're, go we're going to... I just want to, to, to mention that uh, this year, when we, we started this, this year, 2023, our theme is around full restoration. And we've, we've heard uh, messages around that theme from many different uh, uh, speakers, and it has blessed me in many ways. Um, and it's, it's just a, yet another opportunity to thank God, to be honest, that in this, we, we are already in the second part of 2023. God has been gracious to us, even as we've been talking about, you know, um, our children. God has been gracious, you know, as, as you know, Good News Church. He, he has been gracious, we have seen that. And, and we are just trusting him that, you know, he's going to be as gracious as he has always been. Amen. Amen. So, we're going to be looking at <coughs> Samson. And the title of this message is, Samson's Honor is Restored. And I believe that, you know, that was God's design that humanity, the glory that he, he endured upon humanity before man fell was his glory, the honor. And many times that, that honor, you know, we, 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 it, it, it can fail as long as you, you, you are not in, in, in the line and fire, like the soldiers say, you know, it can actually fade away. But, but God has promised us that he will never leave us nor forsake us. So his, his, his love, his desire is always to, to, to refresh, you know, to restore. That little bit of, you know, uh, things that we may actually be losing out. His love is to restore in every way. Hallelujah. Amen. And so quickly, we're going to be uh, reading from the book of Judges. And Judges chapter 13. Judges chapter 13. So maybe I can just take off my glasses a minute. Judges chapter 13. And I'll read from this one. Now Israel again did what was evil in the sight of of the Lord, and the Lord gave them into the hands of the Philistines. And there was a certain man of Zorah, of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was infertile and had no children. And the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Behold, you are infertile and have no children, but you shall conceive and give birth to a son. Therefore, be careful not to drink wine or any other intoxicating drink, and do not eat anything ceremonially um, unclean. For behold, you shall conceive and give birth to a son. No razor shall come upon his head. For the, for the boy shall be a Nazarite dedicated to God from birth, and he shall begin to rescue Israel. And, and other editions say to deliver Israel. Yeah. So we have to, to put that in, you know, at the back of our, of our minds, because this special son was going to deliver Israel from the hands of the Philistines. And so, Judges begins a sentence with this phrase, now 
Israel again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord gave them into the hands of the Philistines for 40 years. So when you hear about that now again, well, it, it means that, you know, there, there must have been a pattern. There must have been a trend. And this time, the Israelites went back to that what? Yeah. That pattern. And now again. And so we can see that, you know, this, this was not the first time. They have been doing it. And even in our time today, you know, there, there are times when we, we lack, there are times when we, we, we can, you know, j just sleep a little bit. But God is gracious. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And you see that, you know, that, that pattern of, within, uh, within judges, it, it has actually been a highlighted. And I'll just give you quickly, you know, the, the verses which, which this same word has been picked, I mean, has been repeated. Hallelujah. Amen. Judges chapter 2, verse 11. We are not going to read that, uh, but I just want to, 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 to ask you to do that, you know, in your own time. Mm -hmm. so, so that you can see that, you know, that, that same verse, this one of Judges 13, is, is being repeated, of, you know, the same pattern that, you know, the Israelites have, uh, have been uh, doing. So Judges chapter 2, verse 11, Judges chapter 3, uh, verses 7 and 12, Judges chapter 4, verse 1, Judges chapter 6, verse 1, and Judges chapter 10, verses 6 to 9. It all talks about, now Israel again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so Israel did evil, mm -hmm. of course. And when they did evil, or did wrong what was, I mean, did what was wrong in the sight of God, God withdrew his protection, didn't he? Because he, he handed, each time that happened, he handed them over into the hands of their enemies, their surrounding enemies, to teach them a lesson. Mm. And when Israel was the oppressed and eventually um, cried to God to deliver them, he did deliver them. Mm. Just like in our time, when, 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 when you are oppressed and, and you, you, you just desire to, to get delivered, in a particular area, we cry out to God, and God answers. Yeah. And so each, each time they cried, God delivered them, and God raised up a judge every time. When they went back and cried to God, he raised a judge. A judge at the time was like, you know, a leader. Yeah. And, um, and, 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 and when the, the judge died, the Israelites went back. They went back to worshiping idol, uh, uh, idols, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and and God hates idolatry. Uh, 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 he hates it, <clears throat> and that's why you know in, in Exodus uh, chapter twenty verses three to five it says, "You shall have no other god before gods before me. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make yourself." any idol or likeness of what is in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the water underneath the earth under the earth you shall not worship them or serve them for i the lord your god am a jealous god our god the god that we serve is a jealous god any other gods besides him you know it hurts him and so this is why every time when the children of Israel, you know, were, were indulging themselves, you know, with the neighboring um, people, you know, in, in, into different activities, it hurt, it, it, it hurt his heart. And he handed them uh, over into the hands of uh, the enemies. And so idolatry in this sense means, you know, abandoning the way of God uh, for another aim, you know, and, and, and even in our time, that is happening, where we can abandon 
you know, just do things our own way. I'll do it anyway. You know, you, you want to use your own strength. And you want to do things in your own might. God can just hand you over to the enemy. But he's a gracious God, the God Amen. that you say. And so, Judges chapter 13 focuses on, you know, the, 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 the circumstances before Samson was actually born. And it says in verse 2, And there was a certain man of Zora of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah. So here we are, we are only given the name of the, the man. The woman, there is no mention about her. And his wife was infertile. So the life of Samson here, we can see that, you know, uh, it, it all begins with a miracle. An angel visits, you know, the wife of Manoah and delivers this good news. And she doesn't even believe it. So she goes back, she goes to the husband and, you know, narrates the story. And then the husband, the second time the, 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 the angel of the Lord visited her again, you know, she went now to, to call the husband, and they listened together as the angel of the Lord delivered the message. That you are going to have the what? The son. And so God moves a barren woman, you know, who everyone thought was the, unable to have children. You know, barrenness is... It's, it's critical, it's crucial in, in, in our African culture. You know, I, I, I'll borrow a Bemba word, you know, um, in, in Kumba. Yeah? In, 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 in Umba, sorry. In Umba. In Umba, yeah. <laughs> sorry, my sister. In, in Umba means barren, a barren person. And, and it, it was like, or it is like still that that you know the uh, the, the parents of uh, you know the the, the husband yeah. if two or three years five years they don't see nothing you know they, they start becoming yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you are just eating yeah. and growing big <laughs> yeah. Yeah. eating enjoying our our son's uh, yeah. Yeah. my son's uh, food yeah. and you are not producing anything. It, you know, it, it was a big thing. It is still a big thing. And I can imagine Manoah's wife was in that same position. Always being shameful, always being despised. But the angel visited her with that good news. Hallelujah. Yeah. And then the, the angel declared that this 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 son you are going to to have is got a big task. He is going to deliver the children of Israel. Yeah. And then Manoah and the wife now were asking, but how, how are we going to manage all this? Just tell us, tell us how we are going to teach and and, and, and look after this child. And and the angel, you know went through and, and spoke to them and encouraged them and, and, and he said he is going to, to be a great boy, a special boy. Hallelujah. And he was to be brought up as a Nazarite. So a Nazarite, uh, in, in olden times, you know, they, they, they had vows you not know, to, to follow, you know. Mm. And, and, and Numbers chapter uh, 6 tells us, you know, uh, those vows, and, and it says this in Numbers chapter 6, verses 1 to 7. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the people of Israel and say to them, When either a man or a woman makes a special vow, the vow of a Nazarite to separate himself to the Lord, he shall separate himself from wine and strong drink, he shall drink no vinegar made from wine or strong drink and shall not drink any juice of grapes or eat grapes, fresh or dry. All the days of his separation he shall eat nothing that is produced by the grapevine. 
not even the seeds for the skins. All the days of his vow of separation, no razor shall touch his head until the time is completed for which he separates himself to the Lord. He shall be holy. He shall let the locks of, of hair of, of, of his head draw long. All the days that he separates himself to the Lord, he shall not go near a dead body, not even for his father or for his mother. For brother or sister, if they die, shall he make himself unclean because his separation to God is on his head. All the days of his separation, he is holy to the Lord. And so you can see these were strict you know, vows that uh, Samson was going to follow. And he need to, you know, he had to, 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 to have all this self-denial, um, you know, um, arrangements, you know, to, to make sure that, you know, he, he kept himself holy. And, and to serve God by, by, by abstaining from legitimate things is the Christian privilege even today as well. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's not about God, you know, looking for, you know, for, for sacrifices. You and me, you know, doing all the sacrifices. He's just looking for a heart. It's just that willing heart to uh, perform what he has asked us to uh, to do for him. Hallelujah. Amen. And now we, we can talk about uh, the time now Samson is actually born. Because this was just a promise. The, the message was delivered by the, uh, the, the angel. And uh, in, in Judges chapter 13, verses 24 to 25, now the fulfillment comes, yeah? So the woman in due time gave birth to a son and named him Samson. And the boy grew, and the Lord blessed him. And the Spirit of the Lord began to, to stir him. At times in, in Mahane, eh, eh, Mahane Dan, between Zora and Eshtal. So Samson was born now. He was being nurtured. You know, we, 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 heard, we heard that testimony from Sister uh, Ladi, you know, when, when uh, a blessing was... Uh, <laughs> you know, at that, that was the time, Samson, you know, um, at this time now, he's born and he's being nurtured, looked after and all that, and I'm sure that time, you know, there were no nursery schools, yeah? So he must have been at home all the time with, with the mother, yeah. And so, you know, the woman uh, gave birth to a boy and named him uh, Samson, um, and, and the Lord blessed him. He grew and the Lord blessed him. And this is why when Pastor, you know, he talks about us praying for our children, it's, it's critical. Because it's in those blessings that, you know, our children can grow. And God blesses. Because God blesses. But we still have that, that uh, we still have that work to do. To look after them anyway. Hallelujah. Amen. And then now, uh, Samson comes of age. So, the, the, um, the, you know, the, the young adults who met last Friday, you know, we, we could say it's around that time now, Samson was at that stage. And of course, you know, getting into a, uh, you know, in a territory of wanting to, to get married. And now, he does uh, one thing. He's an adult. And Judges chapter 14 tells us a story about Samson. In verse 1 it says, Samson went down to Timna. And at Timna he saw a woman, one of the daughters of the Philistines. So he went back and told his father and his mother, I saw a woman in Timna, one of the daughters of the, uh, the Philistines. Now, get out for me as a wife. <laughs> now, if, if you talk about Timna, Timna as, as described uh, in, in 
Hebrew. It, it is a forbidding place, a forbidden place, Timna. And he went to this forbidden place. He's drawn up. He went there and he was attracted to this woman. And he made a decision he wants to, to marry this woman. He goes back and reports to the father that you must get that woman for me. Because she is pleasing him to my eyes. You know, she, 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 she looks good. And how many times, if I may ask, how many times do we find ourselves, you know, stepping out, going into forbidden places? It's, it's, not, it's not that, you know, when you go into a forbidden place, then God crosses you with the red cross. No. You can still be in that forbidden place, but still do exploits for God in that forbidden place. So he went there, and he found this woman. Now, listen to what the parents say. But his father and mother said to him, Is there no woman among the daughters of your relatives or among all our people that you must go to make a wife, uh, to take a wife from the uncircumcised Philistines? And Samson said to his father, Get her for me, because she looks pleasing to me. And verse 4 says, His father and mother did not know that it was of the Lord and that he was seeking an occasion to take action against the Philistines. So you can see, he may have actually been doing that and thinking that, you know, he was just doing it for himself. But meanwhile, God had already promised this guy that he was going to be what? A deliverer. So being a deliverer, you don't just you know, lock yourself up in the living room and say, yeah, I, I, I'm going to deliver Israel. Or I'm going to deliver a particular village um, in, in, in my, 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 my hometown. You have to step out, which he did. So now the parents now realize that, no, this is not our... <laughs> It's, 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 it's not. It's not our um, our, our game. It's, it's, it's not. It's, it's not for us to you know to tell him what what not to do. So then Samson ends up you know engaged to this Philistine woman, and the wedding is scheduled, you know, and thirty grooms. Can you imagine that must have been a massive party? Thirty of them. And then, you know, while, while I was going down, you know, from Zora to Timna, um, I, 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 I've said, you know, Zora to Timna at the time, um, it, it would have been uh, six miles, which is like, you know, a distance from Ashton into Manchester City Centre, around there. So, he, you know, he, he walked up and down. So this time he goes now to to visit the woman, and on his way, you know, he's attacked by a lion. And the word of God says, the spirit of the Lord came upon him. And he ripped, you know, the lion like he would rip a goat. And he went. He never even shared the story with the, with the parents. So now the, uh, the, uh, the, the wedding is approaching and, you know, they are getting ready and everything else. And on, on, that, on that particular day, they sit down and, you know, he says, well, all right now, um, I, I just want to, to have, uh, you know, uh, some entertainment here. I've got a riddle. So if any one of you... 30 grooms, if you are going to get this right, yeah, if you are going to get this right, if you are going, not going to get this right, first of all, you are going to give me 30 pieces of clothing, linen, and the other way around as well. If you get it right, then I'll do that. 
So meanwhile now, these cruise men, you, you know, they are, they are panicking. This, this was a festive, a festive ceremony meant for seven days. So now these guys, you know, they, they, they organized themselves. They said, well, this guy, how, how can you bring all these things here? You brought us here so you can make us poor. That when we fail to, you know, to, to explain this radio, then we have to find, you know, pieces of linen to just give this, this fella called Samson. So they go and tell this woman, you know, if, if you don't get us, you know, the answer, you'll be in trouble. You and your, your father, you're going to be in trouble. So now the lady, what does she do? She goes back now to Samson, please. I beg, or, you know, can, can, you, can you just, you, you, you don't love me. How come, you know, if you did, honestly, you know, you could have shared, you know, at least, you know, the answer to this riddle. And then, you know, under pressure, Samson does what? He gives him, and he, he shares the, the riddle. And which was, you know, in Judges chapter 14, uh, Verses 12 to 13, out of the eater, something to eat, out of the strong, something sweet. And that was, you know, the riddle when, when, when he actually, you know, killed the, uh, the lion. And as he was going back to Zora, suddenly he found that, you know, there was actually honey in the carcass of the lion. But mind you, this guy is a Nazarite. Is not supposed to be anywhere near a dead body. But he goes there and he draws the, you know, the, the honey there, he eats and he takes some to his parents without saying a single word. Young men, young women, in our midst, always be open to share with your parents. Always be open share with your parents, even as you trot from Timna to anywhere else. There, there are a lot of Timnas. We have to be honest with ourselves. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so now, uh, in this, in chapter 15, I'm just going to, to, to run through, but, but we have to be mindful that you know, we are talking about Samson's honor being restored. And all this time, he, he, he was in a world of his own. Doing things, making decisions, you know, about himself and him alone. And so now, that, that reader was, was actually eventually shared with the wife, and the, 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 the wife goes to share that with the, you know, the, the 30 uh, the groomsmen. And then uh, they come to him and tell him the answer. And he was furious. And he was furious. And what does he do now? He goes now to kill 30 men. Out of that frustration, he went and killed 30 men to bring the, 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 the 30 linen. Because he, he had a debt to pay anyway. So he does that, he brings the linen, and then out of frustration now, because he is aware that, you know, the people are aware that he has killed 30 uh, Philistine men, and they are after him. And then he decides to, to go back to his home. And while he's, he's in Zora, you know, the father to, to, to this woman makes a decision. And here, we, 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 we are looking at it like, you know, a story of, you know, everyday life and all that. But it might have taken him several weeks, you know, even a month or so before making a decision to go back because he was frustrated. He had lost out. So now this time he decides to do what? To go back with a goat. To go and, you know, make things, you know, right. And what does he find? He finds that he, the wife had already been given to his best man. And he gets even more mad. 
and he goes out there to just uh, he, he, he simply just tells them one thing. He tells them one thing. He's frustrated. He says, if, 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 you, if, you, if you've done this, you have done this mm. to me, I'm going to take revenge. Mm. And what does he do? In chapter 15, verse 1, um, but after a while, in the time of wheat harvest, Samson went to visit his wife with him. He got a gift of reconciliation, and I'll, I'll go into my wife, you know, in her room, but her father would not allow him to, to go to go in. Her father said, well, I, I really thought you, you utterly hated her, so I gave her to your, to your companion. Is her younger sister not more beautiful than, than she? Please take her as your wife instead. And Samson said to, to them, you know, this time I shall be blameless, you know, in regard to the first times. When I do them harm. So Samson went and caught 300 foxes and tied them, you know, tied them. Verse 4. Samson, so Samson went and caught 300 foxes and took torches and turning the foxes' tails, uh, tell to tell, he put a torch between each pair of, of tails. And when he had set the torches ablaze, he let the foxes go into the standing grain of the Philistines. That was punishment, you know, because they had taken away his, uh, his wife. And then he gets mad. And these people now gang up and uh, they are after him now. Who has done this? You know, it's, it's uh, Samson, because, you know, the father-in-law has uh, given away the wife to his best man. So they went and killed the, 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 the wife and, and the father. They bent, they, they literally just bent them in the house. And he heard about this and he went mad. He went out there and slaughtered as many Philistines as he could possibly do. So after that, he, he, he walks away. There's another episode about him, Samson. He never stops. After this, he goes now to, uh, he, he, he sees, he, he goes to Gada where he, he saw a prostitute and he went into her. And the Gazites were told, you know, Samson has come here. They knew him, and every time, I mean, he was recognizable anyway. So they, they knew him. We just went around quickly. So they surrounded the place, and they waited all night. You know, they wanted to kill him. And they, and, and they said, well, we, we are going to stay, wait here until morning. And when he comes out, you know, we'll just uh, ambush him and uh, kill him. Unfortunately, midnight, you know, he made up his mind. You know, he pulled all the, 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 the gates, you know, the bars and everything, pulled them on his shoulders and, and just dragged them miles and miles away. And then he left. And these people were still frustrated. They were just, you know, looking for a way to capture him. How can we capture this person? He's, he's really just causing havoc to us. As if that was not enough, uh, in verse 4 of uh, chapter 16, it says, After this, he fell in love with a Philistine woman living in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. Mm -hmm. And this is a story many of us you know, uh, know about. And those, those who, have, who, who had the opportunities you know, uh, learning this in Sunday school, you know, Samson and Delilah is, is a famous story, isn't it? Yeah. yeah? And it, it overshadows, you know, the, the rest of uh, these other uh, women he had actually met up with. Um, and then so he, he, go, he goes in, uh, and, and uh, Delilah as well, the governors in that area, they gang up together. They, they, they are interested, you know, how, how can we just get hold of this guy? And they go to her, 
to persuade her. Can, can, can you just say, get more information on how this we can actually um, capture this guy? Because he has commented us for too long. And then Delilah was on that mission because she, she was promised, you know, some good money, some, you know, some good payment. So she, she had this task now to ask, you know, Samson. Samson, darling, I mean, what's the secret of you, of your strength? And that pressure was on and on and on upon Samson until one day. He just gave up. And the women, they can put pressure. Even sometimes on unnecessary things. But she wanted an answer. But for her, Delilah, the issue was she was promised payments anyway. So she, she had no she, she had no time to mess about but to make sure that, you know, she got, you know, an answer from Samson. Mm -hmm. And so three times, Delilah tried to extract information from Samson. Mm -hmm. You know, Samson gave her, you know, the wrong answers. Until when he was dead, tired of, you know, Delilah, pestering him, and eventually he gave him. The fourth time now, she extracts the truth of Samson and she tells her that if, if his hair is cut, he will lose his power and have strength of an ordinary man. And in the middle of the night, Delilah does what? He uses someone to cut his hair. And then she calls the Philistines. And he says, Samson, the Philistines, uh, upon you. In verse 20 of chapter 16, Judges chapter 16, he said, I will go out as I have time after time and shake myself free. For Samson did not know that the Lord had departed from him. Because this time, you know, he was doing things in, in, in his own strength. Little did he know. Uh, you know, he, he had actually violated the last piece of uh, the vow as a Nazareth. And you could actually say this to Samson just as much as we said it to the Israelites. Now, Samson again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord gave him, he gave him to the So now he's given up, he's given out everything. And so the Philistines come, you know, they, 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 they get hold of him, they gouge his eyes out, and they do what? They bound him with the two bronze chains, and he was forced to be a grinder at the mill in prison. Now Samson finds himself in the wrong place. How many times have we found ourselves in a prison cell? where we shouldn't be. Samson was in a prison, a place which was not meant for him initially. He was a promised son, dedicated, separated to do God's work, but because he found himself in the forbidden place and carried out actions, foolish actions, that just you know, enhanced his uh, appetite and his desires, he eventually found himself in prison. And even today, many times, we can find ourselves in prisons, prison cells, not knowing that the Lord has actually departed, not knowing that, you know, the Lord has handed us to, you know, to, to the enemies. Because God wants us to serve him according to the basic rules that he has set. Hallelujah. Amen. But then, the most interesting verse in that story, in that sad story of Samson, 
is verse 22 of Judges chapter 16, where the Bible says, But the hair on his head began to grow again, and it had been, after it had been shaved off. So after he has been shaved and captured, after the Philistines have put out his eyes, Samson finally invokes God. Now Samson is a prodigal son. Now he realizes he's got no sight, physical eyes are out. Now he remembers, I was designed to do the works of God. And now I am in a wrong place called the prison and being used as a slave, grinding nail in prison. Now he realizes, I must go back to the root where it all started. And after all, I was a promised son to deliver the children of Israel. But I'm in there, in the wrong place called a prison. And this verse reminds us that no matter how far we may fall, if we are saved, like Samson was saved, he was a dedicated child, separated to do God's work. And if we find ourselves in that position, and we are saved, we are still his, we are still God's. We may fail, we may fall, but God says, no, if you fall, yes. That is what God desires from us. That when we fall, when we fail, we can come to the realization that, God, I'm in prison. I'm in this prison cell. Forgive me. I'm a prodigal son. Forgive me. I come back to you to eat from the table. You know, the prodigal, the prodigal son wanted him to, eat, to, to, to be eaten with the servants. And the father saw his heart, and he said, no, that is not your place where you belong. You belong at the high table. Come. And this is what Samson did. And so the devil may, may shave a Christian you know, hair closely, but the roots are still there. The anointing is still there, except, except that anointing has dwindled. Because God's design was, you know, the glory, the honor that he bestowed upon, upon humanity before he sinned, it, it, it was marvelous. Amen. And the world might, may, may actually entice a Christian for a while, but eventually <laughs> the hair will again uh, begin to grow. Amen. And the regrowth of, of Samson's hair was symbolic, you know, of the restoration of that special relationship. Samson had actually enjoyed with the Lord in the beginning. And our great God is a God of recovery and restoration. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And while he's in the prison there, the Philistines were, were happy, you know, they, 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 they were joyful, and, 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 and they were busy, you know, um, celebrating, you know, eating and drinking. And Judges chapter 16, verse 23 says this, Now the Philistines, the Philistine lords, gathered together to offer a great sacrifice to Dagon, their God, <laughs> and to celebrate, for they said, Our God! has given Samson, our enemy, into our hands. And this pained God. Because God does not want to, you know, to, his name to be mocked, his name to be shamed. And as, as they were celebrating and, and, and saying that, our God has handed over our enemy to us. The ravager of our, of our country who has killed many of us? 
And while they were in their high spirits, no, they, they said, no, call, call that man called Samson from the prison cell to come and amuse us. And that pained God. And even when Samson prayed to God, he prayed to God. Sovereign God, remember me. Amen. Please, God, strengthen me again. Because he, he realized that, you know, the hair on his head was growing. So which meant that, you know, God had already restored that glory, the honor that he had lost when he was indulging himself in all these activities. But that hair has, is, is growing. And that the anointing, you know, he has come to a realization that, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm an anointed one. So he praised God. And he says, God, strengthen me just once more. And let me, with one blow, get revenge on the Philistines for my two eyes. And you can see, he, he was still self-centered anyway. But, but see, the fact that, you know, he realized, the fact that God, God was, was not happy for the Philistines actually, you know, the dancing and the, and, and, and the pululating, you know, about um, our God has given Samson, our enemy, into our hands. Dagon, Dagon, a dead god, the god, the god that doesn't even no breath, no nothing. They were saying, yes, our god, the god who helps them to, you know, to catch more fish, has helped us, you know, to catch Samson. And God was not happy. So, so, so even even when when, when that hair began to grow on, on Samson's head, the anointing that God. Had, 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 had taken away from him when when the Holy Spirit departed away from him, you know when he, he didn't know that had happened, but when he realized that God has actually um, restored that honor, and he cried to God, just like the Israelites cried to God, they cried to him. They cried to him, and he heard them, Amen. and he delivered them. Amen. And so Samson's story can be hey, connected to us, um, and we can identify that uh, uh, with, with, with him. You know, like Samson, we are called to, to a special mission in the world, to proclaim God's glory, Amen. and to help, you know, even certain people free, you know, for when we go out and, uh, and, and, and uh, witness. We are actually you know, witnessing the, 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 the truth of God's word, which can set people, people's lives free. You know, like Samson, our mission began right at the beginning of our life. Like Samson, we are given a rule of life as well, just like the Nazarites uh, vows. We are given the rule of life in this the book of living. Every standard is set in here. So God tells us how to live and, 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 and calls us to, to a disciplined life of service and sacrifice. But just like Samson, our appetites get us into trouble. And I just want to encourage our um, young men and women that we can have appetites, but you know, let's put God first. For he is the one that, you know, <laughs> he, he, he is the one that guides and leads. Yeah. Even as we go out to search for, for this life in the world. Because the, the, the rich life is in trust Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. And so, okay, can we say we are, we are any better than uh, Samson? Can we say we are any cleverer than, than Samson? No. We may have different appetites. You know, we, may, we may have, you know, we, we, we are looking for cozy homes, you know, holidays and, and a model kitchen and everything else. 
Th those, those are appetites which may be different from Samson's, but they are still appetites. But how much is that taking a toll on us? This is what God has actually assigned us to do for him. And so, all these appetites can be displayed in different ways. But the truth is that, you know, we, if your heart is aligned to God's work, you can still call upon God, even when that has been made. You know, even when you think you are fallen or you have fallen, you can still call upon God and He can uh, believe in you. And He can believe in us in many situations. And the most interesting thing as uh, I, I close now is that Samson shows up even in the faith hall of fame, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32. Amen. And in that chapter, the Hebrew writer mm -hmm. celebrates men and women from the Old Testament, the great men and women. Mm -hmm. We have Abraham, Sarah, Joseph, David, and even Samson is mentioned there. Amen. Was that a fluke? Mm -hmm. no. Of course not. He is there because of someone else, you know, and someone, his life points to. Someone else born under a miraculous circumstances to a virgin. Someone else whose birth was announced by an angel to a woman. Someone else who was given a special mission to bring salvation to his people. Samson's life points to someone else who was betrayed for some pieces of silver, someone else who was mocked and put on display, someone else who brought salvation by stretching out his arms. Remember when Samson was called to amuse, you know, the, uh, the, the Philistines? He asked the boy who was guiding him to go place him to one of the pillars. And in between the pillars, I'm, I'm sure before his eyes were gouged out, you know, he, he had seen already, you know, the, the design of the house. And so he went to the pillars and he stood between them. He stretched arms. And with all his might, you know, he pushed them and he broke them down and bringing all the, the building down, killing more people than he ever killed when he was living. But this someone else who brought salvation by stretching out his arms in a moment of apparent defeat, someone else who overcame his enemies, this time not by raining down crumbling stone on them, this time by unleashing a river of grace Amen. and mercy Amen. and forgiveness. Amen. A river of grace so strong that it is able to catch up someone like Samson, Amen. wash him clean, lift him up into faith hall of faith. Amen. And this is the good news that we can share even today. Amen. And in these incredible ways, the story of Samson points us to Jesus. Amen. It shows that no amount of human effort or ability can save us. Amen. You and I need Jesus. Amen. For Jesus' death made a way for us to live forever with him. Amen. God's son left the glory of heaven to come down to bring God's saving honor to all people. And that on that cross, he bore our shame and restored honor. I just want to leave you with 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 20 to 21. Now in a large house, they are not only vessels and objects of gold and silver, but also vessels and objects of wood and of earthenware. 
and some are for honorable use, and some for dishonorable come. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from these things which are dishonorable, he will be a vessel of honor set apart for a special purpose and useful to the master, prepared for every good work. Amen. And our brother Paul here says, if you cleanse yourself from dishonor, you will be restored as a vessel of honor. Amen. And that is God's original design for humanity, to be a vessel of honor. Shall we pray? Lord Jesus, want us to thank you, to honor you, even for your word. We bless you that you are our great restorer. Thank you for restoring even honor upon this ministry, Good News Amen. Church Ministry. Amen. Well, we thank you that you order our steps. Even when we find ourselves straying into places like Timna, the Lord, you may just strengthen us and cause us to focus on you. You are our great restorer. Amen. We thank you for restoring honor upon us, that when we cry to you, you hear our cry, Amen. and you restore us. Amen. We thank you, Jesus, for the river of grace, of mercy, and forgiveness, Amen. even upon our lives. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.